see if anything's worth reappropriating. Check for stragglers. Spread out. It's open. Can I? I don't. I need to go that way. I think I want to just stealth my way through because we're invisible. I think if we hold the uh, hold the peeping palm plasmid, I think that makes us invisible. So actually, maybe I can just walk away. Maybe I can just ignore. All right. Uh, crap. That's glass. I didn't want to do that. Where am I going? That way? Alright. Well, this is going to be a problem with this. Broken glass here. Let me just... Hold invisibility. And making my way out before running out of Adam. There. Done. Is there loot in here? Not really. What is this? Oh, before we go there, I need to go back here and pick up this tape. I think I missed this tape the last time I played through this. So this opened up. And there's a tape in here, yes! Or a, uh, you know, or a record thing. So the invisibility thing, the inv invisibility thing is a little bit overpowered, as you might see. It has occurred to me that this breakthrough regarding the songbird casts my arrangement with the Oriental Doctor in a new light. What more could be gained by this continued partnership? What secrets that I could not answer for myself? Su Chong can only offer table scraps, and Jeremiah Fink has richer meat in mind. Alright, so Jeremiah Fink solved one problem and he thinks he's better than Su Chong. I don't know, maybe he is. Maybe he is, who knows. But I think the important part here is that the Lutes twins control the tears, and so I think Jeremiah Fink has better access to. Oh, I'm not coming here, I'm going the other way. Or not. Where am I going? Really? That can't... Wait a minute, that can't be right. I came through this way. I'm going back the other way, aren't I? This game, that's not the right way. Yeah, so... Jeremiah think, think, thinks that he... Uh, he's better than Su Chong. But he does have access to the tears, whereas... Su Chong doesn't, so maybe he's right. Maybe he's right. Because... Oh crap, they're alive. Because when... Comstock killed the Lutes twins... What you got there? No, no. Just grabbing anything that looks halfway there. When Comstock killed the Lutes twins, he gave the Lutes device to... Gave the test device to Fink, and so Fink can control tears, I believe, in this game. I mean, in this uh, in this world. If I remember the story right, I think that's how it works. So Fink is using the tears to his advantage. Whereas Su Chong does not control. A Lutes device, although he was he built one in his lab, that's right, so he built one in his lab in the uh, in, in the restaurant. Except that got sunk along with Atlas into the trench, so he can't really get back to it. This story is so complicated. Yeah, okay, so so Su Chong doesn't have a Do you think Daisy really even had a choice. What do you mean? 
Right about now, I'm planning a pair of scissors in her back to protect a child she was never going to harm. But she chose to die for her revolution. What about me? For all the endless worlds, all the infinite possibilities, did I ever even have a choice? No. You? No. Yeah. Booker thought he did. No, he didn't. Look where it got us. Right back where we started. Well, according to the story, Daisy did not have a choice because the Lutes twins would have manipulated events. All these infinite universes. And yet we end up just going down the same paths. No, I'll take your meaning. My father sold me to settle a marker. Comstock locked me up in a tower. And I sold Sally for what? Revenge to prove a point? And yet, here you are, settling the debt. And say we find her. The old past their damage to the young. Isn't it too late for her now? Well, I'd say that's up to her to decide. Just as coming back here was up to you. Rapture runs on children. Little girls with gold growing in their bellies. I'm not going to break any cycle. If I'm lucky, maybe I can dent it. Just a little. I can't believe they actually made Elizabeth say that. Alright, what was I saying? Daisy does not have a choice because the Lutes twins can manipulate probabilities. And so whatever Daisy decides is what the Lutes twins knows she's going to decide. So no, she doesn't have a choice. Booker doesn't have a choice because he doesn't see the doors. He doesn't see the possibilities, nor can he control them. He was there again because the Lutes twins put her there. Now Elizabeth had a choice. Elizabeth could open tears. She could control tears. She could see everything that the Lutes twins can see. So Elizabeth is the only person who conceivably has a choice, except for the Lutes twins. But the way the story is written now, they've made it sound like Elizabeth doesn't have a choice. Which is just bollocks, because she did. Before she chose to come back here. Now that she chose to come back here, no she doesn't have a choice anymore, she, because she already chose. She already chose to come back here. And everything from that point onwards is whatever it is Elizabeth decided to, to do to achieve whatever outcome that she wanted. This game actually had the nerve to ask whether Elizabeth has a choice, of course. Well, she did. She doesn't anymore. Wow. Holy cow. That was one blue, a lot of reds, and I just got it. I'm so good at it. I'm so good at this game. Not really. And no, it's not a good story, man. It's not a good story that you don't have a choice. It's not a good story that the choice is is so undemocratic, <laughs> you know. You know, two char like there's a lot of characters in this story. Two characters have a choice. Nobody else does. The Lutes twins have a choice. Nobody else does. Elizabeth had a choice, but for who knows what reason chose not to do anything else. I don't know. I don't like the choices that are being made, but we no we are not making them. So we just have to play along with the story. That clock is running a little bit too fast. Off box? Oh, loot. All right. Well, let's loot people and then get on a on an airship. Oh look, it's Daisy, she's dead again. We stabbed her right there, up under the ribs, through the lungs, into the heart. That is a good stab. Not many people can manage that on their first try. You really have to know what you're doing. Oh, what's this? Change. 
That's what the people need. But sometimes I feel all I have to offer them is blood and fire. The things they've done to me, I can't forget them. I was Columbia's victim, and victimhood begets shame. Oh, what element of human experience is more corrosive than shame? I'm rotted from the inside out. What do I have to offer this revolution except my own dark motivations? When all is said and done, what's more important to me? The people I want to save? Or those I want to murder in their beds? Okay. Does that justify letting yourself get killed? I mean, if you had enough sense to know that your revolution is turning into a massacre instead of a liberation, why don't you do something about it instead of offering up yourself as a martyr? Like she knew. She, according to that voxel phone, she knew. And, and the solution is to go kill yourself. Or let yourself get killed. That is again. Remember the end of the the the, the game. The solution is to go kill yourself. And like again with Daisy, the solution is to end your life. No, it's not. That's not ever a good answer. Pretty lady has the hair. Yes, I have a lot of hair. I have so much hair you wouldn't believe. Deal is deal. Bring it to Su Chong. Right. Let's go back. Pretty lady put hair sample in tube. Then, business is finished. What's going on out there? Bloodshed, violence, but not relevant to our arrangement. Place hair sample in new mode tube. What I think I'll do first of all is put down a possession trap. Put the sample in tube. There. Because I know how this this game works. I've been here before. I'm gonna put hair sample in tube. Chong, we had a deal now. Open. Do you know what they call someone who enters a man's home uninvited? A thief. And I do not remember inviting you into my city. I had a deal with Su Chong. Yi Su Chong is my employee. It was not a deal he was authorized to make. What do you want? I granted Atlas and his thugs asylum. You serve those same men in a desire to escape from my generosity. If they shall not have asylum, then they shall have liquidation. Give a parasite an ounce of charity. He'll demand a pound. I'm just looking for a girl that was taken from me. A little sister. I don't claim to understand what you are, but I know that you are special. There is business we can do together, and so I give you a choice. Work for me, or die with Atlas. I'm not going anywhere without that girl. If it's a little sister you want, that shouldn't stand in the way of commerce. I've got dozens of them. I won't leave without her. My men stand ready to take down the door. In 60 seconds, they will enter the room. They will either treat you as a valued employee of Ryan Industries, or as a thief in the night. Defend... 60 seconds. There's gonna be half a dozen of them or more. I've gotta get ready. I traps. Again. I can use the plasmids as traps and then seed the room with them. I gotta find somewhere to hide and, and surprise them. Take them down one by one. They talk about choice. They'll underestimate you, Elizabeth. People always do. Forty seconds. You know what I see on your face? Uncertainty. 
Who is this girl to you? 30 seconds. Do you know the value of the shark? Without them, she would be littered with the detritus of the weak. The men who come for you have much in common with those great animals. What sharks do for the ocean, these men do for rapture. 20 seconds. I will tell you something you already sense. Atlas does not honor agreements, and Orion does. I cannot save your Sally, but I can save you. Again, like, he talks about choice, but Time. the game... You're not a hero. You're not even a parasite. You're just a room. And Andrew Ryan has no time for rules. Alright. What the? Who on earth put you here?